Hey, good morning to our fall weather starting to kick in here in September. Hey, I wanted to walk you through here this morning and show you how some of the figs have been doing and growing here over the summer months. And so since we're entering into fall, uh, it's just about time for the figs to call it quits for this year. And so they'll start uh, going into hibernation mode here before long. Um, I have one that I wanted to show you in particular. It's not this one. It just made me think of this. Um, a lot of your trees, for those of you fig growers out there, you'll see see how this green growth right here, all this green growth right there. Um, you'll notice that there's some splotchiness, uh, discoloration, or a darker color. And some of you may just wonder if that's an issue with your tree. That's absolutely, absolutely not an issue at all. It's fact, in fact, that's what it's supposed to be doing. And if you can, let me zoom in here. If you can kind of see, this is the tree actually lignifying to look more like a tree. Uh, give you another example probably here. See how there's so much green growth? I, I don't want that because that's not gonna handle the weather when it gets cold here. You wanna see the tree starting to change color and turning into almost like a bark or a wood color. And that's more what you wanna see. <clears throat> For instance, this one here, this Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross has done a very good job with this. You see there's no new growth at the top. Like it's hardened all the way down through the tree. And so it looks more like how you want your tree to look, especially this time of the year, as you enter into September. And then certainly by October, you're wanting that change to look more like your this woody color. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to bring these in anyway for in case some of you are wondering, like, how does this work? Yeah, I'll take all these in and overwinter them in the garage so that they don't end up dying. Because if I was to leave them out, uh, yeah, that green growth, like this one's just in grow mode. And that's, I guess that's good, but then when it gets cold, not so good. Anyway, the purpose of this video, yeah, if I can even get to it right, <clears throat> is for this tree right here. And for those of you that don't know what this is, this is the Smith tree. All right, we get all these crazy weird names for fig trees, and then we get to the Smith. <laughs> so, um, I left this one I left this one on the tree. Um, we had some family over yesterday and I thought, I'm gonna let them eat some figs since our uh, we had some of our family that had never eaten fresh figs before and I wanted to give them the experience of eating a fresh fig. And then it came to the Smith and I, I saved it for you guys. So yeah, Let's see if I can get a good picture of that. It is, uh, some have said that this is just not a pretty fig, that it's a little bit on the ugly side. Um, I would have to say, it, for those people that, that want to find uh, a really pretty, nice, solid, one color looking fig, this is not going to be it. But I'm telling you right now, this is a beautiful looking fig, beautiful piece of fruit. See, it's got a little bit of green on the underside. That's obviously because it didn't get the sunlight like this side did and that cracking seems to be all right it's not like uh not like it was uh breaking all the way through to let any bugs in plus i had the organza bag on check out that eye though man that's a nice um some of you may wonder well what what does it matter if it's a tight eye or not well for obvious reasons if you don't have these organza bags on bugs they like to find their way into those places so um, I'm not gonna weigh it or anything but I normally do these videos where I cut them open I'm literally just gonna bite this one open today and then I'll, I'll even share it with the rest of the family too so okay I'm trying to hold the camera away because when you hear me chew and crunch it's just kind of goofy that is, uh, wow, that's actually a lot sweeter than I expected it to be. Let's see if I can show you inside of this thing. It's, uh, 
I'm not going to be able to get a good view of this, I don't think. It, there is a, there's a jamminess to this. This is a thicker, for me, it's super sweet. Almost has like a strawberry undertone to it. I'm not even sure. But man, that is... Uh, Smith has been known for being one of your better tasting figs. And that was a lot sweeter than a couple of the other ones that I've had on this tree. And this is the first year it's fruited. So if you know anything about fruit trees, you want them to have at least, some will say probably three years of fruiting before you get the actual flavor of how a fruit's going to taste. Or you get a, a more accurate view of what it's going to taste like. And so, yeah, the name of the game here is to be patient. Um... You'll see these, they're not quite ready yet. And it's it's just to be patient with your fruit, with your trees. Let them ripen the way that they're supposed to. Um, you'll, trust me, at least for figs, you'll be so glad that you did because um, otherwise you'll get a melon-like flavor to these. And it just, you miss out on the the true taste that comes with these fruits. And so, at least for here in Ohio, I'm not going to find fruits that taste quite like this. And having our other family in yesterday, they were able to experience this, that, that we're just not going to find anywhere here in Ohio without stuff being shipped in. And even then, it doesn't taste like fresh fruit. So, All right, I probably beat this thing to death. But anyway, the Smith tree. And we'll check in on another video with uh, uh, some of the other figs that we're going to sample for you this season before we call it quits all right guys thanks for tuning in holly's out there feeding the chickens so maybe we'll come at you with a chicken video before long hey guys thanks for tuning in we'll see you on the next one